this, this, this <laughs> is the TT Artisan 25mm T2 anamorphic 1.33 times. And yes, this is the first time I've tested an anamorphic lens. I am basically a newbie to this kind of lens, so it's going to be a bit of a you know, a testing ground for both of us. We're going to see if this is worth <laughs> even bothering with, playing with. Maybe some of you cinephiles can get in the comments and let us know, you know, a few tricks of the trades. I've got a few ideas, a few tips that might be new to some of you. And yeah, let's have a look at it up close. We're going to throw up some very random test samples. I'm not going to go cinematic and wild. We're just going to see what the lens offers, then it'll be over to you. And then maybe in a future video, we can put out something a bit more interesting. You know how it goes. <laughs> this might be a bit more random than usual. So yeah, let's crack on. Right then, as usual, we've got the instructions spec there. We'll run through a few of the spec notices. Don't forget to set your camera to shoot without lens warranty card and let's just get straight to the goodies the lens itself of course this is something even more different to what they normally put out hey that's pretty cool actually 25 t2 written on the side there snap cap oh there we go look at that look at that absolute beauty 67 mil filter thread there uh, that's cool. So we've got a T2 to T16 iris. That's quite a heavy little bit of movement. You do have the gear mods there. We'll see if it's standard or not. 37.5 mil full frame equivalent. Closest focus distancing of 50 centimeters. Magnification 1.33 times and it only weighs 267 grams as always nice metal mount on the back there it's a very well it's a very nice little size and feel all things considered this is something new even for me now so let's see how this works out we're shooting this way in advance i'm not sure of the release date yet and typically people don't send me embargo dates which can be a bit awkward with other channels but hey here we are maybe your videos come out before mine this time <laughs> it's all good we're all in the conversation together anyway that's far too much waffle let's see how this thing actually fares in the relatively real world Anamorphic lenses offer much more distortion, compression, and often a more immersive view. So this 25mm obviously appears wider than a standard spherical 25mm, thanks to the effect after de-squeezing in post. You'll see it handle bucket differently as well as light flares. Now spherical lenses are often used in movies when the character is doing well. All is nice, sharp, and uniform. And then when it falls apart, they might switch to an anamorphic lens or lenses, I should say, because the image quality imperfections really help to add to the less than ideal state of the character or situation. That's the theory anyway. This definitely makes my boring, boring test look slightly cooler.
If you want to view the image as intended while shooting, you need to use an external monitor that allows for the right aspect ratio. We'd have hoped for anamorphic monitoring in the H2S at the very least, and possibly by the time this video is online, it'll have been added in a firmware update. In post, of course, you can just de-squeeze it one way by changing the Y size to 75.19%. And if you want to avoid the black bars completely, you can start by creating a custom aspect ratio of 5107 by 2160 if you prefer that method. The lens then is okay to use, even as a run and gun style shooter. Focusing is well dampened, if a little funky in use, even with focus peaking. In better news, the iris ring is smooth and nice enough to work with. How's the focus breathing? Instead of me telling you, you can see pretty much for yourself how it's faring in this clip on your screen at the moment. Sharpness at the center is good, softer at the closest focal lengths, and color rendering is fairly flat and usable. Contrast is okay too, but if I'm completely honest, initially at least, the IQ gave me kind of mixed feelings. See, for an anamorphic lens to do well, it needs to control certain factors like the inherent distortion and aberrations. And I'm not that convinced by this one. Now, as an aside, as I'm primarily a still shooter, I had to have just a quick play with stills as well. It's not really the point of the lens, so I didn't spend much time on it, but I wanted to see how we got on. Again, it was just a case of de-squeezing in Final Cut, but of course you can do it easy enough in your photo editing software by going to image size and changing the horizontal figure by 1.33 times in this case, or vertical if you're de-squeezing portraits. Back to the IQ, vignetting is pretty heavy, but it can be used to good effect. And the all important bucket is not quite as good as I hoped, but you know, a valiant effort. Yeah, it's not perfect, even for an anamorphic lens, but you might enjoy what this lens offers. It's not a complete write off at all. At the point of putting this video together, the lens seems to have been put back somewhat in TT Artisan's plans. Again, at the point of recording, they've got no release date, no retail price. And of course, by the time you're watching this, we have both. So let's just consider that the nearest equivalent at the time of recording is the Sure 24mm 28133 that retails around £683 there or thereabouts. I'd expect this one to have come in at about 400 or below. And if so, then cool. It's a good lens if you're on a tight budget, but still want to try out something different in the form of an anamorphic lens. Now, if it's closer to 500 and upwards, then maybe try out the Surrey. I haven't tried that lens, so I can't say definitively, but I know you can try them in UK stores 
for example, for where I am, which is something that we can't do with TT yet. Now, if you've tried this lens or indeed any anamorphic lens for Fujifilm, let us know in the comments section, please. And until then, take it easy.